Hey guys, I uh, hope you're all very much well. I myself am actually on the back end of a week long COVID sesh, which um, has not been fun. I'm triple vaccinated as well and it hit me like a ton of bricks. So um, yeah, do be careful out there. But in this video, I am going to be flicking through my own photo book, The Winter We Walked Alone, which I published at the back end of last year. I thought that going forwards, I might do another little sort of mini series where I flick through some of my favorite photo books, talk about a few of my favorite photos and just give my overall opinion on those books. And I thought this would be a good way to start it by actually talking about my own photo book. Uh, I did an initial run of 100 copies. I've sold uh, just over 70, so I've got just under 30 left. So if you are interested in picking up one of the last copies, I will leave the link in the description. Um, but yeah, I just thought, you know, for the people that have purchased one, thank you so much, obviously. But it might be interesting to give you like a sort of my own insights and, you know, my thought process at the time I was shooting for the project and just talk about a few of the images um, in greater detail. So yeah, I'm just going to set up the camera now. I'm just going to sit by the window here using the natural light, which is what I usually do when I flick through my books. And um, yeah, just film it and talk about it as we go. So let's get started. So this is the final edition of my uh, first photo book, The Winter We Walked Alone. So it's a hard back uh, cover on the book with some black foiling. Initially I wanted to go for like a pure white, like a snowy colour, uh, but the printers actually advised me against it. They basically said that uh, the white would show up a lot of dirt, you know, even so much so that during the, the binding of the books that could create a lot of dirt. So when I received them, they could even already be dirty before I've shipped them out. So they kind of talked me out of it. Um, and I ended up going for this, uh, it's like a, it was called Dove Grey. Uh, and it's basically got like this sort of like, it's light grey with these sort of speckles. So I thought it kind of looked a bit like dirty snow. So we went for that instead. And yeah, like I say, it's just got the title on the front in black foiling. And then on the spine, you've got the title again and my name. In hindsight, uh, I may have just pushed for the white and maybe put a picture on the front. I wouldn't have minded it having a bit of dirt and giving it some character, but uh, this is what we ended up with. And then uh, you've got the end pages here. So front and back are these end pages, they're called. They're what connect the cover to the actual inside book. Um, this is a picture from the book of a it's a shop front to a shop that closed down during coronavirus times and they had shut down and they'd covered the window in all these uh, sheets of newspaper. Um, so I used that kind of repeated six times. It's the same image, just gone one, two, three, four, five, six. Just kind of repeated to give it that effect of like a lot of newspaper articles and stuff. So inside the book, uh, first page is blank, and then the next page is a dedication. You'll see it says to, for Joyce and Arthur, uh, which is my uh, granddad and my wife's nan. Uh, unfortunately, they both passed away during coronavirus times within sort of two weeks of each other, which was uh, a little bit un upsetting to say the least. So first image in the book is uh, one of my favorite ones from the project. It's this uh, little sort of like playground bit on the South End Beach along the walk that I used to do. And you've just got that sort of solo figure in the background kind of walking away from it. Um, this is kind of when I realized subconsciously I was taking a load of images where there was like one subject involved in the frame. You know, I wasn't doing it on purpose, but then when I realized I was doing it, I started purposely doing it and the kind of project Took on its own thing. Uh, and then you've got one of these, you know, Life Boys, Dell 999 and Ask for Coast Guard. A lot of the image, I tried to either keep it to, you know, something where it was like a solo subject or it was giving off that fear of, you know, emergency, depression, upset, like just all these horrible feelings that everyone was having at the time. And then I've got this poem in there, which I wrote myself, uh, which basically says, for seasons to come, lest we forget the winter we walked alone. To protect front line and save our souls, it was best to stay at home. No festive cheer, nor family near, one hug could cost a life. We wish away that awful year where death and fear was rife. So wake me up when summer's here and the fear has melted away. When life can once again be lived and the skies are no longer gray. No longer shall we hesitate, procrastinate or moan. 
for seasons to come, lest we forget the winter we walked alone. And then I've just got this picture. This is probably my favorite portrait of the whole book. So that's why I put it on the front. Uh, this was a guy that I met uh, just walking along and he had just got himself a coffee. I asked him for a portrait. He said, yes, getting to talk to him. He had just got out of prison actually. I think he'd been in there for like 25, 30 years, a long time. So he must have done something pretty serious, but I never asked him, which I kind of regret. And then there's just a little explanation of the book here. Uh, it says the images in this book were taken between December 2020 and March 2021 during the winter lockdown in the UK. They were shot on Ilford black and white film and taken during my allowance of daily exercise, which I used to walk along a three mile stretch of seafront from Western to Eastern Esplanade. So I've put this uh, little map in there, which kind of shows you the walk that I did. Um, again, in hindsight, this was like just something I took off of Google Maps and turned it black and white. I would have actually got like a proper map or a scan of a map or something like that. I would have made it a little bit better in hindsight, but live and learn. And then it says, it was a time where coronavirus cases, hospitalizations and deaths were high, whilst fear, loneliness and depression were being felt by a great number of people, including myself. I suffered from a bit of a breakdown at the end of November 2020 due to occurrences happening in the world and in my life. Suicidal thoughts were had, but I was lucky enough to have the love of my wife and my children to help get me through a tough time, whilst this project helped keep me occupied. Not everyone is as lucky. Now, if you follow my channel, obviously you'll be aware I've spoke about this in the past and you know I'm a strong believer in talking openly about mental health and kind of normalizing it and I think that you know putting that at the front just kind of explaining what the book is about explaining where I was mentally and where the rest of the UK was you know mentally and emotionally at that time kind of sets the tone for the rest of the book so that's why I've got you know a couple of pictures explanation and then it goes straight to the title again the winter we walked alone and that's kind of where the book actually starts off and it's just a guy walking along the seafront with these palm trees covered in snow a uh, bench there covered in snow emergency it's just one of these emergency you know um, phones for the coast guard again it's covered sort of in snow the majority of these pictures were all taken with my Mamiya rb67 a lot of the times i just set up a tripod uh, and wait for kind of someone to walk into the scene. So this, you've got like this COVID-19 sign and there's one solo subject. Again here, it's just a bush uh, with some snow along the seafront, but there's another subject, just one person walking along with an umbrella. Uh, this is actually uh, my friend, or one of my friends, his name is Mark. We had gone for a walk together sort of during this winter time just to kind of, you know, <laughs> chat about <laughs> what we were going through individually. And uh, I took a picture of him. This is a ride down Adventure Island along the seafront. Um, I liked the kind of vibe that, you know, it was taller than him, overlooking him, this kind of overlooking feeling that we were all going through and having of, you know, the virus and what was going on. And then again, just more images I'll flick through, but you've got here like these bins. There's a person on a little scooter going past there. I set up this shot of, you know, this donut covered in snow and ice cream place. Everything was closed, you know, nothing was open uh, at this time. And this person just kind of walked into frame with a mask on, which I thought was good. Uh, another one here, so snow's kind of melting. Now we're just along the seafront. They've got the arcades, person walking through the scene. I like this shot of the casino. And again, you've got, I don't know if you can see on here, but there's just one little bird flying past. So it's keeping to that same theme of like one person one thing this was um a guy who was just sitting there fishing you know i thought it's freezing cold how is he fishing uh, but i went up to him and asked him for a portrait um the actual interaction is on one of my previous videos regarding the project and um yeah i really i really enjoyed that one he was the first actual stranger that i asked for a portrait and he got kind of by saying yes he gave me the confidence to continue a couple of pages throughout the book, I've put some of this um, kind of government media that they were putting out. Like there was a lot of these things sort of as you were walking around the streets, just telling you, you know, all these scary things, stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives, you know, making you almost feel bad for being out and about and trying to get some fresh air. Like go home, you're killing people. Uh, then there's a little bit of a run of, you know, I tried to sequence all these things that were closed. So you've got fish and chip shops, it says closed car park closed again you've got one solo subject in the background there 
I opted a lot of the time for you know some full pages and some smaller images just to kind of break up the book. This was a pub, closed, of course, everything was closed. Some uh, seafood bar, you know, another amusement. These, these were taken on 35 millimeter, these ones. There's a mix of 35 millimeter and uh, medium format in this book, but they were all shot on either HB5 or FP4. So another calf closed, South End Pier closed. So it's just this kind of run of things to do with things being closed and nowhere being open. That's the shop window of the shop that closed down, arcade shut down. This, this, and this, they're all the same arcade. So these are 35 millimeter photos of that arcade. And then I've got another picture of it kind of in full where you see the shadow of this woman walking past. Again, just like one solo subject. Uh, these are this, this telescope thing. I've matched them up. They were taken at different times, but I matched up the images. Uh, again, this is a phone box that had been smashed up. You know, there's no one around, but obviously someone's felt <laughs> some form of aggression towards it and smashed it up. Put another bit there, stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. And that's the actual, one of the actual signs that they had around everywhere. Stay home, protect the NHS, save lives. Uh, a portrait of a mum here. So I actually took a couple of this woman um, and I moved her to this location just because I liked this kind of long alleyway behind her. I felt like, you know, a lot of the mums especially new mums during coronavirus times where they weren't allowed to see their family, they didn't have friends from anyone, and you know, she'd walk this long, lonely road by herself. That was the kind of vibe I was going for there. Uh, and then we've got these two photos where they both say, keep your distance. So that's a shop saying, please keep your distance, because remember we had to keep two meters apart. Another one saying, you know, shop local, shop safe, keep your distance. And then I've got a bit of a, a series of images of people going in the opposite directions to each other as if they're keeping their distance. So you've got this cyclist going that way, this woman walking that way past the public toilets. Uh, this is a full page one. You've got this man there with his dog behind him. So it almost looks like they're keeping their distance from each other, even though, you know, it's his own dog. Uh, got this jogger here running to the left, you know, with these seagulls kind of going nuts around him. A woman walking to the right there past the one of the arcades. Uh, this is actually my wife there walking down that way. Um, but I just like the image again of, you know, someone kind of a solo subject there. So I included it in the book. This is interesting. So there was a building, uh, some building works happening along the seafront and they had some scaffolding up. And a couple of times I tried to get some photos kind of through the scaffolding because I liked the feeling, it kind of created the feeling of being in a cage and being trapped. So these are the two that I ended up using. We've got this one of a little kid on a bike. His parents are literally just out of frame there um, where he'd kind of stopped and they were like, you know, calling him over. But, you know, luckily I managed to get that shot of him just this little tiny kid with his little bike, you know, being kind of trapped. And then again, there's a man walking the opposite direction. So they're facing opposite ways again. Uh, this was probably the second or third woman, um, stranger that I asked for a portrait. That's the scaffolding behind uh, that you can see there. So I kind of put them together just so you can get a feel for what it looked like from the other direction. Like behind there is the scaffolding where those two photos were actually taken. Uh, again, she was just kind of sitting there. I took two photos of her. One, she looked up and looked at me, but you know, during that time when we weren't seeing many people, I think we were all kind of, you know, stuck to our phones. It was the only sort of social interaction we were getting was looking at our phones. So I, when I saw her, she was looking at her phone. So I asked her to just look back down at her phone, which she did for me. And um, yeah, I, I think honestly, even though it's been like two years now, we're all still much more addicted to our phones than what we were prior to lockdown. Um, something I'm trying to get over and get better at. So these were two uh, shopping trolley carts. You know, I was walking along one day and I saw them just there. I, you know, I didn't set them up. That's exactly how they were when I walked past. And I thought it, it was interesting that they looked like they were kind of squaring off to each other, like they were about to have a fight or something, or they were kissing. I don't know. They were face to face like that. And one's small, one's big. So it's almost like one's a woman, one's a man or one's an adult, one's a child. It kind of, that's kind of what I was thinking when I took that photo. And then honestly, a couple of days later, I went back down for another walk. <laughs> the big one was on the beach like that, just kind of knocked over upside down right by the sea. 
I didn't put it there, it was exactly how it was when I walked past. And I just liked, you know, being trapped inside, there was a lot of things going on with domestic violence, um, people not used to spending that much time together and whatnot, and I found it, you know, incredibly interesting and it kind of gave off that vibe of they'd have a fight and <laughs> this trolley unfortunately lost. Uh, this woman, so I took this photo first, I was walking past, I saw her sitting on the beach by herself, uh, there's a couple of seagulls kind of overhead circling her, almost looked like vultures circling her, you know, and then I was about to walk away and I thought, do you know what, no, I'll go and ask her for a photo as well, and luckily she said yes, you know, and I like how that one came out, got a windsurfer here, uh, again, it's just more solo people, solo subjects, Rossi's ice cream, this is like famous South Rain ice cream place. It was shot through uh, just the window because obviously it was all closed down. Things had kind of started opening, like this is a fish and chip shop and they were just serving fish and chips through this little tiny hatch window. And uh, we'd got some fish and chips. I think I was walking along with my family and I asked this gentleman, oh, would you mind if I took your portrait? So the first one, he looked at me and he smiled uh, and then I was like, well, that doesn't really fit the kind of you know, the theme of the book. When I walked past, you were just kind of staring into the distance. Could you do that again? So he did. And obviously, if you know anything about the Mamiya RB67, you have to wind the film as well as uh, crank the shutter, which I had forgot to do. And I accidentally took this double exposure. But I ended up keeping it because I liked the kind of vibe of showing his two faces, you know, like the face he puts on for the public and how he's actually feeling, you know, that kind of still fear and stuff going on, you know, deep in his subconscious. Then there's a few images that I took uh, down Adventure Island which is like a thing for the kids full of rides. I had emailed them just because it was closed down and I walked past it you know like every other day and I thought Do you know, it'd be nice to get in there and take some pictures of the empty rides and stuff. Um, so I emailed them to ask them and you know luckily someone come back and said yeah go on then. So uh, I went in there one day um, with a couple of rolls of film and just kind of rolled about roamed about taking pictures of the rides and tried to keep the theme going, you know, these empty rides, solo things. This is one of the staff members who let me in. I asked her for a picture, uh, roller coaster, some more stuff. I've put some more um, things on here, stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives. Tried to make these ones a little bit more uh, fun just to go with that picture, if that makes sense. You've got like the elephant and this big turtle up here with his tongue out. Some more rides, empty rides, empty roller coaster, sky drop. I liked that, you know, I shot through a roller coaster. That's like one of these drop down things, and I shot through a roller coaster uh, to get that photo with a longer lens. And then I think just as we were leaving, um, I had, honestly, I had one shot left on my last roll of film. Like I'd smashed through four or five rolls of uh, FP4. And then as I was leaving, this was a security guard who kind of saw us out and I had one photo left and I said, you know what, I've got one photo, would you mind if I took your portrait? He said, yep, that's fine. I didn't have, you know, I had to get it right first time. So I set things up and made sure I was in focus and yeah, it came out great. He's got like a little bit of a smile on his face, but I liked how it came out. Uh, this was a little bitch where they've like, they've closed off the beach, like you can't walk into the sea. They've like blocked it off. I was like, I understand you stop us going to shops and stuff, but you can't stop us from going into the sea. <laughs> uh, some mud, the tide's out, one boat, one woman sitting on a bench there by herself, and then another woman sitting here. Now these four poles are actually the same poles in this shot here. This is actually a friend of mine again, Anna. Um, I'd met up with her just for a little walk and she let me take her picture. So yeah, they're not all portraits of strangers and I think you'll find in most books um, where there are portraits, they're, they're never all strangers. This is again, just another picture of someone from the distance. You know, I managed to get this wide shot here. Luckily there was just one person in there. This is how, just how it went, you know, every time I was walking around though, I barely saw anyone, like another solo subject. I quite like this one. So you've got some of Adventure Island in it, this big lift here. Uh, on top of Pier Hill. You've just got one little person down there walking their dog. You know, this whole wide shot and there's only one person in it, which uh, a lot of those, once I realized what I was doing, I was quite proud of how they were coming out. This was a person, he, he was jogging obviously, and um, I was walking past and he had just intense agony on his face. He had obviously got cramp and uh, I bent down and said, oh, do you mind if I take your picture? He was like, what? Um, yeah, go on then. 
and uh, he was just trying to stretch out and get rid of his cramp. But I just like his face, you know, that excruciating annoyance almost that we were kind of all going through at the time. Again, another little woman there. So I'd set up uh, a shot just to like the left of here and there was this woman standing there just looking out to sea and I just kind of quickly turned the camera just in her direction and took a picture and then like turned it back. She had no idea I took it, but I like how that one came out too. Um, I think a lot of the time when I was walking about, because I I wasn't seeing many people, you know, I was definitely seeing a lot of faces and things. Like this is just like a roof, uh, two security cameras that look like eyes and you know, these like fence that looks like teeth. Uh, I'd walk past this cone, someone put like googly eyes on it and some like leaves coming out, it looks like hair. Uh, that was just there, I didn't do that. Um, I took a picture of that as well. Kid on a bike, he was doing like bunny hops and stuff over these ramps in an empty car park. I asked him for a portrait. Uh, this is a self-portrait. Uh, I thought I had to include one in the book, just this mirrored surface on uh, South End Casino, um, which I took a picture of myself in. Uh, this guy, Aid, uh, so I do actually know this guy, I asked him for a photo, but he walked, uh, he was down there walking his dog anyway, so I asked him for a picture and um, he put on this lovely sort of grumpy fed up face for me, which was perfect and I even got his dog to look, so I really like how that one came out. Uh, so I included uh, one next, just this is a 35mm one of a person walking their dog from the distance just because it matched him. Then you've got the coast or the sea there and then I've got a portrait of a girl uh, next to the sea, um, which is cool as well. And then some more sea shots, this is just one of those, you know, what do they call them, windbreakers, I can't remember what they call them now, jetties, nope that's not the one. Never mind, but it's covered in birds uh, all along there. I just liked that photo and I thought I'd do it as the double page spread. So this is the last little sort of section here. This is when things were getting better. They'd changed the slogan, the government slogan to um, stay at home to stay alert, control the virus, save lives now because things were getting better and we were allowed to go outside. Shops were opening up. Uh, this takeaway was open. I unfortunately didn't get the whole sign. I wanted it to say the whole takeaway now open, but I kind of had to cut it off because uh, I didn't get it in. Uh, and then this was like a very, very underexposed shot of a sunset, but I thought it kind of fit the, you know, the bad times are ending, the sun is setting on that horrible few months we'd gone through. And then this is the last photo in the book. So every photo in the book has got one solo subject and this one has got two, two gentlemen sat between these trees on a bench talking. Um, and I think this was one of the last photos I took because it was over. Yeah, and then I put the poem again right at the end, uh, just because I thought once you've flicked through all the images, reading the poem again kind of um, made a little bit more sense once the, looking for those images kind of brings back all that memory of, of everything that happened and then reading it again kind of reinstated it, so to speak. And just a little bit of text on the end, just saying thank you for purchasing a copy of this book. A special thanks to those who have followed along with this project from the beginning and offered their guidance and encouragement. With special thanks also to my wife, Rebecca, for helping me through a tough time and a constant love and support. This next little paragraph here, I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest with you. I, I'd basically like used a thesaurus to make the words <laughs> seem better than my own uh, vocabulary, and I kind of regret doing it, but I, you know, I was going through a lot and I wanted to kind of, you know, make other people remember that if they're going through something, it doesn't last. So I basically, it says, giving up is conceding that things will never get better. And that is just not true. Ups and downs are a constant in life and the universe cannot slide into stasis. It must reach a climax and then begin again. Its job is to achieve peaks, not plateaus. And if you have peaks, you will undoubtedly have troughs. Life is a tempestuous but exuberant ride and the only way to make it worthwhile is if you savour the good parts and learn from the bad. Now I strongly believe everything I said there but you know I didn't need to use such silly big words. And it just says 50% of all profits made from this book will be donated to the mental health charity Mind. If you're struggling with your own mental health the most important thing you can do is talk to someone about it. Now, I strongly believe that honestly. The most important thing you can do if you're struggling is talk to someone. And then that's the end, end page, end of the book. So that was my photo book, The Winter We Walked Alone, uh, from start to finish.
Um, like I mentioned at the start, I do have a few copies left, so if you are interested in picking up one of the last copies, the link is in the description. I don't think I'll be doing another run of this, to be honest with you, although I am happy with it. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, and you know, if I could go back in time, there would be a few things that I would change. But um, yeah, I'm happy I did it. I learned so much throughout the whole entire process about shooting the project and printing the stuff. I still will do a video at some point in the future about, you know, my ideas and how I find ideas for project works, you know, how I approach the project, how I approach the printers, how I sequence, all that kind of stuff. I will do a proper in-depth video from start to finish, every process, every step of the way. Um, I'm definitely going to try and do more videos going forwards. I want to get back to being more consistent and doing maybe one a fortnight. I think that's more realistic for me because I've been kind of lacking. Obviously, I've been busy with moving and work and now I've had COVID and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I've got a couple more videos in the works. I will get better. Uh, thanks for sticking around. If you were here from the start, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for joining. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.